Okay, guys, so I made this short animation last week and I would really love to share some thoughts about it. So basically what we've got here is one long shot with the camera following the hand-drawn character, jumping on some 3D platforms, reaching his destination and looking on some cloudy castle in the sky. Just like last time, I started by creating the path that my character would follow. In this case, some um, 3D platforms. The next step was creating a key poses with my 3D grease pencil stickman rigged with Rigify. Then I moved to animation of the camera. I made sure that camera follows the dude, play around with the F curves in graph editor, played around with motion paths and after some time, I decided that I'm happy with it and moved forward. Then I tweaked the animation of the character with a great help of motion paths for hands, feet and torso. The hand-drawn animation was supposed to be done on twos. It means that although the FPS of my scene is 24 frames per second, I animate every second frame of the character. That's why I changed the 3D reference character interpolation method to constant. When it comes to camera movement, I wasn't sure. Working on twos with complicated camera movements sometimes gives bad results, so I used step interpolation modifier on my camera in graph editor. Then I attached the grease pencil object to the base bone of the rig with child of constraint and started redrawing the main character. As you imagine, it was a long and tedious process. But come on, it's animation. It's supposed to be time consuming, right? This time I use only two layers. One for the whole body and one for the hair. Because the grease pencil object was attached to the rig, the onion skins weren't working the way I would like them to work. That's why I used the great blender add-on called Onion Peel. You can set the onion skins to use walled space and it solved my problem with onion skinning. When I was ready with the animation process, I created some planks to make the platforms look at least a little bit more interesting. Last but not least, I made the background artwork by creating a big cylinder and using it as a canvas for my surface painting. Obviously I needed a brand new GP object, not attached to the rig. And by unchecking this little bastard here, I could add artwork from the point of view of camera without creating new GP keyframes. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So, uh, thanks for watching and goodbye. See you next time. God damn it, this part is always so awkward. Bye.